In this video, we're going to tie a small dry fly called the Sparkle Done. We're going to start with the Daiichi 1180 dry fly hook and some Vivas 10 aught olive thread. Now, the first thing we're going to do is form the wing of this fly. So I'm just going to start my thread at the two thirds point of the hook. And I'm going to stack a small clump of deer hair and get the tips nice and even. I'm going to pull out any of the butt ends that get caught in there. You'll end up with a nice little section of deer hair like that. Now we're going to take this deer hair and we're going to tie it in facing forward. And we're going to tie it in so that it's about the length of the shank of the hook. So I just kind of roughly measure it out on the shank of the hook and I'm going to do two loose wraps of thread to kind of capture that deer hair and I'm going to continually wrap backwards and bite down with that thread. And I'm not going to let go of the butt ends. I'm going to keep tension on those butt ends and then I can trim out those butt ends very carefully. And I do so while I'm still pinching them. There we are. Now before I grasp the wing, I want to wrap through those butt ends a couple times with my thread. And this is going to really secure that wing to the shank of the hook without having it spin or rotate. It's really easy if you don't wrap through those butt ends for that wing just to kind of flop around and spin and rotate on you. And I'm going to take all that deer hair and I'm just going to kind of draw it up and back and I'm just going to real quickly just kind of clean it up and pinch everybody together. So I'm just going to draw it all up and I'll throw a little bit of thread right in front of it. And this will kind of pinch it all together and just kind of keep it in place for our next step. Then I can just push it all forward and jump my thread back here to the back again. Now we're ready for the tail. And for the tail we're going to use a little bit of Zelon. I found mine at Blue Ribbon Flies. The Zelon is actually pretty hard to find. There's a few other substitutes. You can use sparkle yarn or other things. So I'm going to take some olive Zelon. I'm going to tie in a clump here right at the base of where we tied in that wing. Then I'm going to wrap back to the bend. Then we can trim out that Zelon. Got a little stray fiber there. We'll get rid of him. Then we'll take our thread here to the back again and you can either use a thread body or a dubbed body. I like to use a dubbed body, it just makes the fly look a little bit buggier, a little shaggier. But you got to be real careful with the dubbing on this fly. You just basically need enough to coat the thread. And I'm using a hairline dubbing, just a kind of a hair's ear blend. And I'm going to tie it with an olive brown color. I like the olive brown. It's real buggy kind of earthy color. And we're just going to put on enough to just coat our thread and get it started. And then I'll just work my way forward. Just kind of pull all the deer hair forward out of the way and we'll work our way up that little ramp that we made with the butt ends of our wing. And just enough, just enough dubbing to coat the thread, just real careful. There we are. And then I'm going to push all that deer hair back out of the way. And I'm going to continue to dub that dubbing right in front of it, just forming a head. Now we're not finished yet. I need another small strip sliver of dubbing. And we're going to really wedge that deer hair in a place. So I'm going to do that by taking a few wraps right up against it in the front 
and a few wraps behind it in the back. So just enough to coat the thread. And we'll take my wrap right up against it. Then I'll pull it forward carefully. If you trap a few, don't worry about it. You can always trim them out with your scissors. Then I'm going to take a wrap right behind it as well with a few, I'd say moderate, tight wraps. Right behind it. And then again, right in front of it. And that'll really wedge that wing into place. And you can take your thread and whip finish right there at the eye of the hook. Now you need to fluff up your wing, so I just kind of pull it to each side, trim out any straggling fibers if you have them, and we need to trim our tail. Now the tail, I've seen it kind of trimmed a few different ways. I've seen some people trim them the length of the shank of the hook, and I've seen other people trim them half the length of the shank of the hook. I like the half. Less is more, I always feel like, on this fly. So it's just a little half trailing shuck and what you'll end up with is this little half moon wing. You see that? That's a perfect profile for a mayfly. Sits nice and flush to the water. Just put a little floatant there on the body and the wing. I like to kind of scraggly up my tails a little bit. Just kind of rough them up and it really looks like a mangled shuck in the film of the water. There we go. And that is a finished sparkle done. Here I'll give you a, a front view of the fly. You can see there you have the half moon wing. That's exactly what you're going for. One of my favorite little mayfly patterns. It's caught a lot of fish for me out here in the west. And you can tie it in all kinds of colors. Olive, brown, PMD, sulfur, black, you know, whatever whatever color matches the hatch at that time. And that's the sparkle done.